In the previous lecture, we discussed some aspects of the shock and how the shock front divide the uh, upstream and the downstream uh, region of the uh, fluid in, in terms of the uh, thermodynamic parameters. So let me repeat what the definition we had. Uh, we call the region, the fluid, which is ahead of the shock as upstream and the fluid behind the shock as a downstream. Or in other words, as the shock moves on, the shock fluid, we call it as a downstream and the unshocked fluid, we call it as an upstream. And we also had some uh, assumptions and we did the whole calculation on based on certain assumptions. So one of them is the shock front is a plane wave front, plane shock. So plane shock and uh, uh, and the velocity is normal to the plane. That's one assumption. Another assumption we had is the upstream fluid is at rest and the shock is moving at a velocity u. So let me write down the shock velocity. That is u. So the upstream fluid is there. So if I sit in the shock front, then the upstream region, upstream fluid is uh, going to move towards the shock at a velocity u. And in the frame of the shock front, so we de we derive how the thermodynamic conditions on the both the fluid, both the sides of the shock are connected. And uh, I like to pick up uh, two equations from an earlier lecture. So the first one is the conservation of mass flux. That is nothing but one of the jump condition. If you remember, that is rho one v one equal to rho two v two. And remember, one represents suffix one represents in the quantities in the upstream region. Suffix so 2 represent quantities in the downstream region, where O1 is the mass density, V1 is the velocity of the fluid uh, with respect to the shock. In the upstream velocity, V2 is the downstream velocity. And we also got one more relation towards the end of the lecture concerning a strong shock. A strong shock is when the Mach number is much, much larger than 1. If you remember, the, we got one more equation, that is gamma 1 by, sorry, rho 1 by rho 2 is gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1, where gamma is a polytropic index. So, and, and uh, yeah, and we know oh, V1, V1 will be nothing but U, because that is the velocity at which the uh, upstream is moving towards the shock, in, this, uh, in the shock frame. So, for a fully ionized gas, gamma is equal to 5 by 3. So when you substitute this, so typically what you have is rho 1 by rho 2 will be equal to uh, 1 by 4. Now from here, rho 1 by rho 2 is nothing but V2 by V1, correct? So that means this is equal to V2 by V1. Or it says V2 is equal to 1 fourth of V1. And now we know V1 is nothing but the velocity of the shock itself. That is u. So we are considering a non relativistic shock. So the treatments all are in a non relativistic region. So this is an interesting expression. That means if you are in the shock, if you are on the shock front, so what it will see is the upstream fluid is going to reach, move towards the shock at the speed of u, whereas the downstream region is going to move away from the shock at the velocity one fourth of u. So that means if I sit in the downstream region, the upstream is, what is the velocity of the upstream region will be this minus this. So this minus this, that makes three by four times of u. So that is in the downstream region is going to see the upstream region is moving at a velocity three by four times of u. And similarly, upstream will see the downstream region moving at a velocity three by four of times of u. So this is a very interesting result. So the plasma, which is in the downstream is going to see the upstream is going to come and hit at a velocity 3 by 4 of u and similarly the plasma which is in the upstream is going to see the downstream is going to come and hit at a velocity of 3 by 4 of u. That means the magnetic homogeneities associated with the downstream is going to hit the charged particle uh, head on in the downstream upstream and similarly the particle in the downstream the magnetic homogeneities are going to collide head on with the uh, particles in the downstream region. So that means you will have always a head down collision. So and and this in this process, so that means actually the particles are going to cross the shock front. It moves from one uh, downstream to upstream and upstream down. So in this process of crossing the shock front, they are going to get accelerated. 
So, and this type of acceleration, which we call as a shock acceleration, and uh, till then the particles keep crossing the shock, it is going to be, it means crossing is going to be scattered by the inhomogeneities of the both the sides, they will keep energizing. Okay, we will see that how they get energized in shortly. So, and that's what, how the, uh, that's what we call as a shock acceleration. Okay, so let me, uh, fine. So let us, to get the, how the particular, uh, gain, particular gaining energy is crossing the shock, so let us consider a reference system. So let us consider a reference system where the x-axis is along the velocity of the shock. So I'm going to have two reference systems because I'm going to have an upstream, reg uh, upstream region and a downstream region. So let me associate a K-frame with the upstream and the K-prime frame with the downstream and this both the frames are moving along the uh, x-axis with each other. So the velocity, the relative velocity between both the frames, which I'm going to call it as V, will be 3 by 4 times of Q that we saw just now, previous, before we saw. Fine. So, and... Let us consider a charge particle or electron in the upstream, which is going to move to the downstream. So this charge particle can be relativistic. Though we said the shock is non-relativistic, the shock part charge particle can be relativistic. So let the energy and the momentum of the particle in the upstream region be E and P. So this is upstream. So as the particle crosses the upstream and reaches the downstream, the energy measured by, measured, the energy of the particle measured in the downstream will be, P prime will be gamma, that's the Lorentz factor, uh, into E plus V, that's the velocity, relative velocity between the both the frames, and and P of x as the x component of the momentum. Where gamma is a Lorentz factor, we know that there is zero to one by one minus v square by c square. We are considering a, a very uh, non relative v is v is much much less than c. So you can typically make this as one. So that means this equation is going to become epsilon prime equal to epsilon plus v p x. So this is x component x component of the momentum. So I can always write the x component of the momentum as P cos theta, where P is the magnitude of the momentum, cos theta is the angle, is the angle uh, at which the particle is going to cross the uh, cross the shock front and reach the downstream region. So this angle. So that is so the angle at which the particle is going to cross it. So the angle can be 0 to pi by 2 because it's always a head-on collision. So fine. So, and, and let me assume a case of uh, highly relativistic particle. That means, so for a highly relativistic particle, you can always write, you can always write the momentum P as typically E by C. So, E by C when I write it, so then this is going to become epsilon prime or E prime, E prime equal to E epsilon, E plus, what was that? Uh, um, v by C E cos theta. Fine. So if I take this E here, so I'm going to get as epsilon prime minus epsilon. I'm going to call that the change in the energy. And that is going to be V by C epsilon cos theta. So if I take this energy here, what am I going to get is a fractional gain in the energy. That will be V by C cos theta. So this gives you the fractional gain in the energy as the particle move, as a charge particle of energy E in the upstream, when it is going to reach the downstream by crossing the shock, this is the gain in the energy we get. So now, the, as I said, theta, theta can be from zero to pi by two. So all the particle can cross at all possible theta. So then the average gain, average gain is of the charge particle uh, by crossing the shock will be that is delta epsilon or E by E will be equal to V by C of average cos theta. So we have to find out, so what is the average energy gain will be? If I know the cos theta, so then uh, average of cos theta, then I can always find out 
uh, the uh, average gain in the uh, particle energy. So, so for that I would take an average. I need to the probability. So now I ha uh, uh, the probability of a charged particle reaching at a uh, at a uh, at a certain angle theta probability will be typically will be proportional to the number of particle the number of particle reaching at an angle theta number of particles reaching uh, in a small angle interval i'll call it as theta and theta plus d theta and then the rate at which they are crossing into the rate of crossing. So now the number of particles, nothing but it's a typically if you find out it goes the number of particles will be proportional to the volume element. So therefore the number of particles crossing at angle like theta and d theta will be typically the volume element. So that is going to be proportional to sine theta d theta. Right? That's the volume element comes. And the rate of crossing is going to depend upon the x component of the velocity that is nothing but a cos theta so the rate the rate will be rate of crossing will be proportional to cos theta so therefore the probability is going to be proportional to the product of these two that is equal to sin theta cos theta d theta therefore the average of the cos theta will be 0 to pi by 2 well, that's all the angle we have so and what you're going to have is cos square theta d theta divided by 0 to pi by 2 this whole that's equal to uh, cos sorry cos square theta sine theta d theta and into cos theta sine theta d theta so this is a trivial integration and that will be this will be 2 by 3 2 by 3 fine <clears throat> so fine. therefore the delta e by e the fractional energy gain by the particle will be 2 third of v by now, so this is this is interesting. this is the so the fact what this says is the fractional average fractional gain by uh, in the particle as it crosses from the upstream to downstream that is equal to two by three v by c. So similarly, the particle can cross from downstream to upstream a same amount of energy gain will be there. Okay, so in one round trip, so it's up from the particle which is in the upstream. It goes to the downstream and then return back to the upstream the total gain will be twice of this so the energy gain in one full round trip that is delta e by e i'll call it as a round trip will be 4 by 3 v by c so here if you see so the fractional energy gain goes as the order of uh, v by c okay and we can put up the velocity of the shock so v is nothing but i removed it here v is equal to 3 by 4 times of u so when i put that here so this is going to be yeah just u by c so u is the velocity of the shock so now so therefore the fractional gain in the energy by crossing the shock that the particle is going to get accelerated and the gain is going to be in the order of v by c if you remember the stochastic process uh, stochastic acceleration where the rand mirrors are randomly moving the energy gain was typically by v by c whole square but whereas here you get it as a, a u by c that's in the first order so that's why this type of acceleration is called as a first order fermi acceleration so the first order fermi acceleration happened if you can carefully look into how this all are happening is because basically all the scatterings are going to be always a head on. So when they have the when their scatterings are always head on, the energy gain will be in the order of V by C, and that's what we call as the first order acceleration.
so first order fermi acceleration so and since v by c uh, is of course to be larger than your uh, v by c, v by c whole square so this acceleration is going to be more efficient so as the particle remains so as the particle keep crossing the shock the particle can gain energy in a much faster rate and uh, and uh, so uh, that's what this acceleration is a more efficient acceleration process till now we know in the universe so in the next lecture so let us in the next lecture under a very simplistic scenario let us see so if i let the plasma to cross the shock up and down so if i start with certain distribution of the plasma or something i am going to have a, some distribution of plasma if i uh, if i want say the plasma is keep crossing the shock and get energized and what will be the accelerated electron distribution for the accelerated uh, we will deal with electron so accelerated electron distribution uh, uh, means uh, i will say once it reaches a steady state or something after a long time what will be the like, accelerated electron distribution when you see it around the shock front that we will see it in the next lecture thank you